2 Thessalonians chapter 2, please. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Bible says that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of his devices. So it is important to know uh, concerning Satan's devices. So it is important to know that in the last days we are not to be ignorant of Satan's system on how he's going to deceive and control our world. We have to have an awareness of that. We can't just be ignorant like everyday Americans following a machine. We got to be aware of his devices so we don't fall prey into his system. Now, throughout the elite system within our world, you'll notice what runs throughout our world is that you'll see a lot of uh, Jews, Masons, and then Catholics in there. But they seem to elevate more on Jews and Masonry. But you got to understand this, the Catholic Church is still the mother of all abominations. Why is that? The Bible says so. So I want you to also turn to Revelation 17. We're going to look at Revelation 17. So there are 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which we're going to look at, but then we're also going to turn to Revelation chapter 17. It is important to understand that the Catholic Church is the mother. So we got to understand that fact. She is the top of the pyramid, so to speak. Now, it is also important to understand that within conspiracies, what you're going to find is also contradictions as well. It is important to understand that. Why is that? Because everyone is hungry for power. Everyone is hungry for power. So the easiest example is today's powers. You notice that in today's power, just because the president is the top, it doesn't mean everything goes according to his system there. There's always different powers that would follow, but also try to contradict and do things their own ways. Everyone, here's something you got to understand. Once you taste power, you're drunk on it. And then you want to do what you want to do. That's flesh. So we're going to cover right here, basically, the Catholic Church is like an octopus. Basically, it's the head, and then the tentacles are all the other elites. They do whatever they want to do. So basically, it doesn't. sometimes it follows a systemized format. It comes from a root of everything, but everyone does what they want to do. That's why you're going to see some contradictions as well. But when you look at biblically speaking, we know that the Catholic Church has to be on top. Why? Because it's biblically speaking. And not only that, if you look at any power today, it doesn't matter. You, I guarantee this, I guarantee you this, you will see a Catholic somewhere, no matter what kind of power you go to. All right, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And... Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So she is the queen of everything. Look at verse 2. Uh, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. See, all the kings of the earth, they lie with her. They fornicate with her. She's truly the mother of everything. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. It is true, everyone from the earth today, they have been influenced some way from the Catholic Church. Now, the thing is, is that when we come to the big great powers right here, like I mentioned before, the big great powers that people will turn to concerning the top of the pyramid, which is a no-brainer, and you're going to see this name until, it turn, until you turn black and blue. It's Rothschild. Rothschild, Rothschild, Rothschild. So he's one of the top that you will see. And then the second thing that you'll see is Masons. And then when, where they supposedly landed on the moon and then discovered things in outer space, you're going to see that Masonic symbol in their, in their flags. Now, if you go to the root of everything, what you're going to find out is this. There is absolutely no doubt that when these people came out, you've got to go to the root. You've got to go to the mother. Mother gives birth to the children in power. It is accurate to say the Catholic Church is the mother who gave birth to these people. And we're going to look at some interesting quotes right here from several people. So concerning the Jewish elites and then the Masons, we will see right here that there is no doubt that there is a Catholic Church as the mother. This is by a quote from Salvador de Madariaga at 1820. And he's a Spanish statesman who wrote the material called the Jesuits. Quote, the Jesuits were driven to cooperate with the other two international brotherhoods, the Freemasons and the Jews, 
referring to Rothschild's Illuminati, in the destruction of the Spanish Empire. Here's a quote from 1855 by an American historian in, the, in his work, The Life of Horace Greeley, by James Parton, quote, There are still old ladies, male and female, about the country, who will tell you with grim gravity that if you trace up masonry through all its orders till you come to the grand tip-top, head mason of the world, you will discover that the dread individual and the chief of the Society of Jesus, that's a Jesuit general, are one and the same person. Here's another quote right here, which is kind of interesting. This is by Edmund Ronane at 1879. He, uh, he used to be a Romanist, but now he got out of that. He's all, he also used to be a Freemason. So he had experience with Freemasonry. So the book is called The Master's Carpet or Masonry and Ball Worship Identical. This is his quote right here. Now this is very interesting where he mentions the King James Bible here. Hmm. Hence, according to Pope Leo XII, after whom the present Pope is named, the very Bible which is insulted on the Masonic altar, Masonic altar contains not the revelation of God, but simply the gospel of the devil, while Freemasonry steps boldly to the front, exclaiming, Quite correct, most holy father, quite correct. My square and compass are every way equal to, if not superior, superior to the authorized version of the Bible. So they're mentioning right here that their book or whatever is superior to the King James Bible. Now I can go through a lot of interesting conspiracies like Manly P. Hall, for example, his quote about that there was a conspiracy against the King James Bible. That's why they came out with these modern versions. But aside from that fact, if not superior to the authorized version of the Bible and will enlighten mankind quite as well, go on, my dear sir, go on, brother Leo, and issue your bulls and encyclicals against the Bible with all the rancor of which your old heart is capable. And I'll keep right in my peculiar, uh, peculiarly uh, aggressive course. That was mispronounced. Okay, don't get me on that. Degrading and debasing. Degrading and debasing God's word below my pagan emblems and teaching my people that it is no better than the Quran, the Shasters, or the Book of Mormon. Go on, Mr. Pope. Make all the Roman Catholics you can, and I'll guarantee to manufacture quite as many infidels from among the Protestants. And between us, I think, we shall be able to neutralize the great work of the Reformation and perhaps destroy Christianity altogether. Mm. Here's a quote by Nesta Webster, 1924, English historian. The book is called Secret Societies and Subversive Movements. Quote, several knights who had set forth to rescue the holy places of Palestine from the Saracens formed an association under the name of Freemasons, thus indicating that their principal desire was the reconstruction of the Temple of Solomon. So these knights, which are, who are supposedly Catholics, you also know that they're connecting, uh, connected with Freemasons. And their goal is Israel. Now who's going, whose goal is Israel? Whose goal is to take over the temple? Mm, okay. Anyways, here's by uh, another English historian at the 1900s. The book is Secret Societies of All Ages and Countries. Hecthorne is, is the one quoting. There is considerable analogy between Masonic and Jesuitic degrees, and the Jesuits also tread down the shoe and bear the knee because Ignatius Loyola thus presented himself at Rome and asked for the confirmation of the order. Now, I don't know if you know Masonic rituals. They do that. Yeah. Okay, they do that thing about the bearing the knee, but it's interesting, Ignatius de Loyola, he did that when he started his order. All right, where are these people getting these ideas from? This is by Alberto Rivera, 1979, and he was a Jesuit priest who exposed all the conspiracies. And what's very interesting is you read about how he died. 
And when you read about how he died, then you know there is something weird going on here. Okay, we give out chick tracks and we give out those comics from Alberto Rivera. So we believe in a lot of the things concerning about the conspiracies with the Catholic Church. Okay, here's a quote from him. The higher I went in the Jesuit order, the more corruption I saw within the institution. I was invited to attend a secret black mass by high-ranking Jesuits in a monastery in the northern part of Spain. When I knelt to kiss the ring of a high official, I saw a symbol on that ring that made my blood run cold. It was a Masonic symbol, a thing I hated, and I had been told to fight against it. I found out that the Jesuit general, the Jesuit general was also a Mason and a member of the Communist Party in Spain. How about that? Now, here's another one is by William O. Peterson. He writes about the 32nd degree, the 32nd degree of Masonry. So when they formed the Oath of Masons, this is how it went. Sh quote, Chevalier de Bonville, this is the guy's name, Chevalier de Bonville, formed a chapter of 25 degrees of the so-called high degrees in the College of Jesuits of Claremont in Paris in 1754. Okay, listen to this. The adherents of the House of Stuart had made the College of Claremont their asylum, they being mostly Scotchmen, one of these degrees being the Scottish Master, the new body organized in Charleston, South Carolina in 1801, gave the name of Scottish Rite to these degrees, Scottish Rite Freemasonry, which name ever since that time has characterized the Rite all over the world. Notice that Jesuits were involved in this. Here's another quote. In the matter of the Stuarts, so the House of Stuart was really involved in this matter. In that matter of the Stuarts, we are, however, on firm ground with regard to Freemasonry. That the lodges at the end of the 17th century were royalist is certain. And there seems good reason to believe that when the revolution of 1688 divided the royalist cause, so that revolution of 1688, a lot of it was heavily Protestant, actually, Christian. So a lot of them didn't like that. The Jacobites who fled to France with James II took Freemasonry with them. With the help of the French, they established lodges in which it is said Masonic rites and symbols were used to promote the cause of the Stuarts. Thus the land of promise signified Great Britain. Jerusalem stood for London and the murder of Hiram represented the execution of Charles I. Now, you'll notice right here that they do have an infatuation with the city of Jerusalem right here. Satan did not give up on that land, folks. He has a goal to take over the world. He wants the temple, Jerusalem, to himself. Okay, so let's look at some passages here. 2 Thessalonians 2, right? The Antichrist, he's going to take over the temple. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to read verse 4. Who opposes it? Uh, verse 3 is the son of perdition. Okay, now, remember, Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition, is he not? Amen. Judas Iscariot, who is he? He's a Jew. He's a Jew. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the where? Temple of God. See, the, they want to take over Solomon's temple, the Jer temple in Jerusalem. That has been their goal ever since the beginning. Showing himself that he is God. See, he wants to proclaim himself to be God. Now, this is very interesting right here. This person, this Antichrist, verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth what? Already, Already work. Now, think about this. Who is, the mo who is the ruler of the world at this time? Satan is a spiritual being, but who's the physical ruler of that whole world that time? It's Caesar, a Roman emperor. So we see right here that this one world ruler that Paul was saying is already here. Well, who's that one world ruler that Paul is speaking of at his time? There's only one being, it's the Caesar. He was a one world ruler at that time. So Paul said that he's already working. Thus we know the Antichrist has to be Roman. But the verse says at verse 6, He's not revealed yet. 
See? So he's already working at verse 7, but he's not officially revealed yet. That's why it makes sense when pagan Rome fell, the Roman Catholic Church carried its power, and it's still alive today. So there is absolutely no doubt that the Antichrist has to be Roman. Why? Because Revelation 17 showed that it's going to be the mother as well. We also see that he's going to be Jewish. Why? Because Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition. You look at Daniel chapter 11, the God of his uh, fathers. See, so he's connected with Jews. And then there is no doubt that Masons, you see that all over. You see that all over when you read their writings, their materials, and then conspiracy. So this is all intertwined, see? So, but remember, who got the Rothschilds and the Masons together? That, see, the mother. The mother gets them all together. And then everyone wants a piece of the land of Jerusalem that time. So the Antichrist, what is his goal? His goal is to take over the city of Jerusalem. That's his main key. During the Crusades, what did the Catholic Church want? They wanted, the, they wanted Jerusalem. And then the, the Knights of Templar who are connected with Masons, they were a part of that as well. See, how did this all happen? Why did Loyola did the bearing the knee? Like the Masons, where did the Masons get their idea from? See, birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. If you read their O's, it's very troubling too. It's a lot of similarity with their O's because it shows that there's a common cause somewhere. There's a common mother somewhere. So this is what Satan's trying to do with our world. So then the top mother is undoubtedly the Catholic Church and then the Rothschilds and Masons are over there. What, what is their goal? Their goal is taking over Jerusalem. That's the key. So then we see right here that, but the Muslims, they're the ones running all rampant over there, right? So what does the Antichrist have to do? He has to get the Muslims involved. That's why he will, that's why he will be Muslim. He will be Jewish. He will have uh, the connections with the Masons and the Catholic Church as its connections. So he's going to be a Muslim Jew with those connections. And then because of such diverse power and a diversity of ethnicity, who wouldn't want to vote him for president of the United States one day?